Chapter 20, The New Scriptures as Written by Jesus, Sananda, Transcribed by Catherine E. May, PSYD, October 20th, 2013. It is time to look forward with new eyes. You have lived through the darkest times on planet Earth. The cloud is beginning to lift. You will all learn to sing and dance again. You will experience light-hearted fun even better than when you were young. You will remember how difficult it has been in recent years and the contrast will create such relief and joy. You will not be able to stop smiling. You see, from where you are in higher dimensions, we can see all the timelines leading to your future and they all point to ascension. You are beginning to understand the deeper meanings of what ascension really describes. Of course, it means rising up, lifting, moving upward, but it refers not only to the physical event, but also to the emotional and spiritual feelings you will experience when you raise your vibrations to a higher level. This is the important part, the state of your heart. It has been a long dry period for human mankind. You had lost your connection to your adoring creator who is love. You had lost the happy connection to mother, father, God, because so many were taught to fear the judgment and punishment you felt were inevitable for your sins. Ironically, the idea of sin was created by the reptilians who wished to instill fear in the hearts of all humanity in order to gain control over people's feelings. Once a person is living in fear, they are easy to manipulate. They will work hard to avoid pain and punishment. The irony of this situation is that the things they choose to identify as sins were so much a part of every human being's normal state that it produced a dilemma which is impossible to overcome. Until recently in the Western world and still pervasive in the East, it is the unfortunate fear and dread which young people have felt when they experience a sexual attraction to one another rather than celebrate their deep response to one another they fear disapproval of it from all their elders who would predictably offer dire warnings and disapproving glances love was separated from the sexual expression of love and a new dichotomy arose in relationships it became common for individuals to experience love without sex and sex without love, but rarely the two combined. Other dilemmas were created when people became convinced that anger and disapproval of any kind should be completely banished, even to the point where self-defense became confused with sinful aggression. This was convenient, this was a convenient ploy which was used by the abusive powers that be who wished to disempower anyone who might be inclined to fight back to try to regain their freedom. It is a mind twisting trick to convince a person they are bad for defending themselves for rising up against an oppressor. It was a large part of my teachings to help people learn to express love in all their relationships and it is still the goal of our work towards ascension. However, you begin as an infant who needs tender direction and acceptance before you can learn to accept all your feelings, all your impulses as a part of your glorious human makeup. Only then you can learn to manage the normal responses to life which to child include frustration, anger, envy, and fear. 
These feelings can be brought into balance with steady support and kind direction, especially when it comes from an adult who is simultaneously modeling patience, affection, and a long-range perspective. This kind of teaching is nearly non-existent in the cultures of the earth realm. Here, we hope to correct the tradition of intolerance and judgmental condemnation toward the very things that make you the brilliantly creative and powerful human beings you are. Those who stand in judgment of others pretend they are doing God's work. We must begin with the need to relieve your feelings of shame and guilt for small transgressions and idiosyncrasies which, I assure you, are not province of those who stand in the gate of heaven. Shame is a toxic, destructive emotion. It is not the same as regret or remorse, which is based in a deeper integrity the echo from your higher self. Remorse reflects in a conscience concern for being in alignment with the greater good. Shame, on the other hand, is created by the fear of what others think of you and can be largely unconscious. Those others who define you or may not be accurate in their view of the world and they have mostly misunderstood what God stands for. I come as teacher, friend, brother, to speak the word of God. And as I feel it in my heart, as I hear it in my ear, and as I see it with my own eyes. Yes, I am the son of God, but I am not only the son. We are all born of the love of our creator. There is no other beginning. We all will live together throughout eternity in the unity of one. Unity requires no recognition of the part of those who are joined. It is simply is. It cannot be otherwise. Are you comforted by knowing that God loves you? If it does not produce in you the feeling of euphoria and peace, then you are not allowing the love to flow into your heart. In your heart is the chamber which holds the secret to fulfillment. We have called it your human mind. There in the depths of your heart are the intelligent cells made up of the same genetic material as your brain which allow you to feel truth deeply and to register the electrical signature that is love. Some call it intuition, but it is much more profound and complete than the phenomenon you call a hunch or a gut feeling. Work with me now to reactivate the receptors in your heart, which will allow you to receive love and with it the deep knowing that comes with being completely connected with your higher self. You see, this configuration produces a total experience. It includes heart, mind, and spirit, and it is a neurological structure which could be identified with scientific instruments in your instruments were more sensitive. Your current measuring devices are able to show the energy flow in a person whose receptors are fully activated, but your scientists do not yet understand the meaning of this subtle energy. Now, I said you will connect with your higher self. This is what you might call the third point in the electrical energy connection. Begin with your heart. Feel the powerful energy emanating outward from your heart center. Notice the direct line, like a power cord to the center of your brain. There, in the center, you will feel the power of being the I am presence. 
the conscious awareness of being present alive and in command of your own entire life experience. You will then experience the awareness that your I am presence is activated by being linked with your higher self, the essence of your soul, which is located just above your head. This is the essential connection, which allows you to live in your multi-dimensional awareness. It is your direct connection to God, to the knowledge of your many past life experiences, and to the constant flow of love, which is the fundamental essence of the universe. This, dear ones, <clears throat> is your roadmap to enlightenment. Practice every time you feel a new breath entering your body. Practice when you walk across a room. Practice when you sit down to eat a meal. Practice when you smile, when you look upon a child, when you take a shower, when you feel the sun on your face. This is the path to what you have called mindfulness. Keep practicing and you will feel my presence beside you, my hand on your shoulder cheering you on. You may find it easier to begin by acknowledging your higher self energy, bringing it downward into the center of your brain, following the flow of light, which pours down on your prime creator from the center of the universe, the great central sun. Let it flow directly through your higher self down into your brain along the pathway of your inner channel of light. Trace the energy as it flows through you, down through your throat, along your spine, and into your heart area. There it ignites the fire of your being, the wisdom of the ages, and the essence of your I am presence. You are home. Once you feel that three-part connection, you are now experiencing the truth and the power of your human existence, the ability to live in complete harmony with your environment because your inner environment is that of love, light, and unity. I rejoice as I observe so many of you working to make this your reality. Forge ahead, beloved ones. You are learning the lessons of the ages, and you are stepping into your destiny, your birthright. Reach deeply into yourselves and keep going deeper until you find the place in yourselves where you can feel endless love for the young child you were, for the conscious self you have always been, and for the expanding being you are at this moment, growing learning, evolving, and perfect in your ability to change. All the universe is in the process of expansion and change. You will expand along with your dear Mother Earth, for it is your path to be the explorers, creators, inventors. By daring, leave old ideas, be daring. Leave old ideas and old patterns behind. Reach for the stars and the stars will reach for you. The time for unity, reunion and joy is here. You will soon be joining in glorious celebration with your star brothers and sisters. Alert your friends, even the skeptics and non-believers. Tell them to watch the hundreds of videos on the internet which show the lights of movements of starships. They signal to you with red, green, and white lights. They are eager to offer their greetings. Soon you will meet again. I send you blessings and love in great expe expectation for a brilliant year end far better than fireworks or promises. I am your Jesus, Sananda. Transcribed by Catherine E. May, October 20th, 2013.